Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. And welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined today by Simon Paul, MD of Castillo Copper, an Australian based copper miner, dual listed on ASX in the London main market. They specialize in copper exploration in Australia and Zambia. Welcome back, Simon, and thank you for joining us today from Australia. Good morning, Donald. How's things over there? Very, very happy to be in today. Yes, you're a first interview of the new year. So happy new year to you, Simon. And happy new year to you. Yep, very excited about what, what, what we've got to talk about. Really excited. Okay, the big one is part of Mount Oxide in Queensland. So what's the headline news from there today? Our announcement this morning had a lot of detail in it that my clever people are getting frightfully excited about. But the headline numbers are, we've come across from two separate holes, two different spans of mineralisation, 40 and 44% wide at 1.64 and 1.19% copper. Now, that's, that, that, that's basically a major discovery for us. So in geological terms, is that a big deal? Yeah, it, it is. It is, because uh, these holes are... are uh, geographically apart. Uh, there is a, there's a school of thought this might be one contained system. Uh, further drilling of the resource will actually uh, will, will firm that up for us. Okay, so how many drill holes were drilled at Big One? And if you could run yep. through some of, the, some of the technical results in a bit of detail for us. Well, we've done 20 RC holes at Big One so far. The first two, we're probably going to go back and re-drill. We, we might want to take those um, a bit deeper. So I'm probably calling that we've actually done 18 holes. Um, RC holes are what? I'm sorry? RC holes are what? A reverse circulation. Um, without getting too technical, the, 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 bit, the bit goes down into the ground and the fines are pushed up on the outside and a, a geologist is up there collecting the fines as they come up. It's a lot less cheaper than doing cork uh, or diamond drilling is very expensive when you end up with just a core of the earth coming out. Um, but when you're doing this sort of uh, level of exploration at, at the, the level at the moment, we use RC because it's, it's, so it's so much cheaper. We will be putting in some diamond holes uh, a bit further along in the process. Fantastic. And the detail that you've, you've discovered? Uh, no, we had already planned to do it. Uh, what we're doing at the moment, look, we have two further packages of essays still to come back. Um, we get, we've plug, we're plugging the information in from this morning's announcement into the model. Those further two packets will also be plugged into the model. And then we'll have a rethink about whether we go a bit deeper, whether we go to diamond core in a different way, whether we put in some more holes, whether we change the angle of attack. Um, we'll have, we'll, we've got the rainy season now, so we've got the luxury of time to have a take a breath, rethink, compare this new information, overlay it with the historical model, and yeah, and, and just see where it lies. At the end of that process, very possibly we'll end up with maybe a few more holes, a bit deeper, and maybe a, and a slightly different pattern. Okay, so let me let me ask you, what's significant about the overall geology of the big one, and how much further do these RC drills extend the known mineralization? Yeah, well, we we probably need to do more drilling to actually understand how how much further it does extend. What we are finding with these two spans of forty plus meters, it looks like it's roughly at the same depth. We're also seeing that there's a, there's a halo around the high grade ore, which is a lot. Uh, higher in mineralisation than what we first anticipated. So that all, that, that all leads into uh, a, an economic uh, pr proposition. So, so does the depth. And th these, the depths we're talking about are relatively shallow, which means, once again, from an economic uh, supposition point of view, they're easily, relatively easily, easily mineable. Um, from, from a recovery position, these, are, this, these minerals are quite easily recovered, low cost. In relative terms, yes, yes. And, and the other thing is, what we're talking about is, is relatively high grade as well, um, which also helps with, with the recoveries and, and, and building that argument of going for uh, a jog inferred resource and then ultimately and hopefully uh, a mining lease. Okay, so what's your interpretation of the results? How much potential to scale further? How commercial is the big one? Uh, is this a large copper cobalt mine in the making? Um, yet to be determined. I wish I could put hand on heart and, and tell you how the next uh, couple of months or, or year is going is to play out. We haven't done enough drilling. We haven't done enough survey work. We, we simply have to pad the model out. As I mentioned before, we've done 18 to 20 holes. They're, they're just the RC ones. We're planned to do up to 38 uh, originally with the original program. That might change by a few holes now based on the new information. We don't know enough for me to put my hand on heart and say we'll be doing this with a, a, a mining lease uh, for... Uh, copper and cobalt. We, we need some more information, but right now, uh, with what we've come across from only two holes, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. It's better than what we had hoped. I must admit, it is better than what we hoped. 
So pretty exciting. What comes next in yep. terms of workflow? How much more time, drilling and resource does it take to evidence the scale of the discovery for you to yep. make up to what you described as a JORC compliant resource? Well, we probably can start work on that JORG um, implied resource now. Um, with the parameters that we have. Once again, the clever people are doing that work in a dark little room and they'll, they'll let me know how they're going uh, pretty soon. Uh, with the more information we have, it obviously adds on to the information they have to work with and therefore the size of the resource. But we think we think we might have enough information to hand to be able to do that now. Certainly if we do some down the hold EMs and also some ground EMs, electromagnetic surveys, um, basically you run a, a magnet over the top of it uh, and you're looking for resistance. Now I've just, I'm, I'm saying that in most, Geological people will be falling over saying that's very simplistic, but that's um, pretty much as I understand it. So once we do the ground EMs, once we do the down the hole EMs, um, it'll give us a better idea of a snapshot where we are at the moment, but we still need to do more drilling. Uh, as I said, we've done 18 to 20 holes. We planned originally to do 38 RC holes and seven diamond holes. This is just a big one, by the way. This is just a big one. We still then move on to ARI with that uh, massive anomaly that we have there. We're in the middle of the rainy season at the moment. It started chucking it down. Uh, Oh, just, just prior to Christmas, we're demoed from site, um, at completely expected. Uh, we're hoping to get back, well, as soon as possible. Uh, I've spoken to our, our contacts up there. They say, look, Simon, it, it, the rain stopping is important, uh, but what we really need to do is get the ground to dry out, and then you'll be able to come back in with your, your heavy equipment. Okay. The ground survey that I spoke about before, that can be done with a, a four-wheel drive vehicle. It doesn't need the heavy equipment. We can access that pretty much you know, in the next couple of months. When do you expect the ground to dry out? Uh, I'm sure Noah asked the same thing. Um, uh, we, were, we were meant to have a particularly early and a particularly hard and a particularly long wet season. I don't know if it's actually shaping up to be that. Uh, ordinarily, the, the stock stand answer would stop raining by uh, 31st of March and be on the ground 30th of April. That's in a normal year. Um, it would, hopefully, it'll look something like that, but very possibly there's probably an extra few weeks on, on to that, I would have thought. I'm trying very hard not to quote Bob Dylan, the hard rains are going to fall. <laughs> okay. Um, you've told us the commercial find, how, how commercial the find is. You think it may well be commercial, but it's a bit early to say. Uh, is it too early to be thinking of partnering with a big player to develop a copper mine? And has anyone approached you? Uh, my, my, my standard answer to this, which is absolutely accurate, everything's on the table all the time. Um, and so and we enjoy last time, to be fair, a few months ago. And, 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 and our perspective hasn't changed. Are people in touch with you, though? I like talking to a number of people. OK, so you've been talking to people, you continue to talk to people. It may come to nothing, it may come to something? Yes. OK. In terms of CapEx, how will you prioritise your various assets? You've got Mount Oxide with the big one, you've also got Mount Oxide with Aria. Uh, how far are those two apart? Uh, you've got Kangi Copper Mine, and you've got Z and Zambia. So how do you prioritise are you spend? You've got, what, five million Aussie you had last time we spoke? How do you spend that? Yeah, well, to be honest, it's almost a good problem to have. Um, I mean, just if we look at Mount Oxide, whilst we, we've done a lot of talking about uh, Big One and Aria, um, just want everyone to know, there is another eight prospects on our leases that we are bobbling on the background. We've done some de desktop work on. Uh, as, as soon as time, money and resources allow, we'll be up there drilling those as well. So uh, it's more than just big one in area prioritising over Zambia, Kangi or even Broken Hill. Um, look, the, the rainy season is, I wouldn't say it runs like clockwork, but no one's surprised it started chucking it down just prior to Christmas because that happens every year and it will dry out. We know that sometime around March, April next year. Uh, so we've, we've kind of planned for this. Our focus, we, 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 we've, done as, we've done as much drilling as we can prior to the rainy season. We're going to do the ground EM work there now because we think that's the be best shareholder value is to firm up We'll get more information out about what's actually under the ground there at ARIA. Uh, but during this time, we'll also be having a, a look in Zambia as well. Um, um, that we, yeah, we've, got some, we've got some interesting things over in Zambia. There's three very large anomalies that we want to get our teeth into. And we plan to do that over this rainy season in Queensland, knowing that we couldn't get back there with the, with the, with the drills. But um, it is a bit of a, a juggling act. There's finite resources for finite money. And um, yeah, it, it's, it, it is a... It is a juggling act, but uh, Queensland is just too compelling, too compelling not, not to focus, you know, the majority of our attention at this point in time. Understood, Simon. Uh, and what kind of news flow can we expect from Castillo over the next few months? What are the milestone announcements we should be looking out for? 
Well, I did mention before we've got the announcement out today. That's the first batch of finals that have come through from the uh, 300 series of holes. We've got two further packets of information that are coming through from the labs, and that should be with us in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I did mention before that we're, you know, we're having a look at uh, the group ground surveys and, and down the whole survey. So depending on the ground. Uh, and the, the, the resources available. We'll hopefully be doing that in a few weeks, maybe a month's time. Um, parallel with that, we'll be looking at the JORG uh, resource. If we can get that up and it's in sufficient numbers that justifies it, um, the context that the board is having these discussions at the moment is that we uh, will probably we'll, we'll probably make an application for a mining licence if those numbers justify it. So um, that's that's. And then of course we'll be back into doing drilling at uh, a big one, and then on to ARIA. Um, uh, yeah. March, April, May. Fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for speaking uh, from Australia today, Simon. That was very helpful, really interesting. Uh, you can find more from us on our Twitter feeds at London Southeast, and I'm on at Donald Leggett. And don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. Finally, in these uh, pandemic times, do stay safe. <laughs>